offer freedom, the right to own your own business, do your own thing. Some of you that are in this Amway business are doing things nobody could pay you to do. It's your job, regular job, asked you to go out nights and talk like that and meet in living rooms like you were sneaking around town. You could say, you got to be out of your tree. I wouldn't do anything like that. But you're doing it because it's your business and you're free. And it's amazing what you'll do to get ahead when you have the option instead of somebody telling you what to do. You're doing it because we have rewards in this business. And those of you who are in a leader positionship of this business know that over the past few months when we talked about writing a little bonus check, we did it to everybody all over the world of Amway and said, you're all in this together. You and people like you all over the world. We understand that part. But what is it that caused people to turn to this business? And I believe it is because of the loving, caring attitude of the people. But while we talk numbers, I want you to get a little quick history lesson on why and how free enterprise works. And then I want to add that element to it for you so you'll see the new formula. In all the years that I gave that old talk, we always did it this way. We talked about MMW. That is man's material welfare. We are talking simply here about the economic system and what provides food, shelter, and clothing for people. How do we get cars? Or how do we get food? How do we get furniture? How do we build houses? What makes these things happen? And why does the free enterprise system and the countries that practice it have so much more than those that don't? We know that if we pay the price, we can have it too. And that's what that system and that part of the world has got to learn. My concern, however, as we move forward is that those new economies discovering free enterprise will forget the third element that's important to that, and that is what the title of this speech is, the compassionate capitalism. Because I believe that is the glue that makes our business function. And when we learn that, and in our experience and looking back at our 32 years, I think we know that this business has been held together by dedicated people who really understood that even though we never defined it. In the early days of this business, we focused, we did things with a sales plan. You can't prosper at the expense of the people you sponsor. There is no profit in the act of sponsoring. Thousands of companies have tried to follow us and they all do, they grab the money as soon as they sign them up. Instead of being committed to the well-being of the people that join them into the very roots and the grounding of the Amway plan was that precept that the first thing you have to do is make sure the people below you win. And that's why you begin that process in the act of sponsoring. And that's why so many of your uplines spend more time worrying about your achievement than you spend worrying about your achievement. Your directs and your diamonds and those people, they stew all day and all night about how to make you successful because this plan is oriented to helping the lowest man climb the ladder. As long as we keep our focus on that, we'll do well. When I left after the first meeting today, I walked out and some lady stopped me. She said, I can't tell you how happy I was to hear what you said today. She said, my group, all they talked about was making money, driving bigger cars. And she said, nobody ever talked to me about what you're talking about. This is what makes this thing work. This is what the heart and soul of the Amway business is all about. How come I never heard it? Well, maybe some of us never understood it. The business is driven by a compassionate and caring attitude. And that's why it's something we must carry forward as we move forward in the world. As we move out into the world, it's going to become more important than ever that we develop the compassionate attitude for everybody that we touch. That means you'll be giving. And it is my belief that that's what drives this business. And that's why some of you stay in this business even when you feel like quitting because you know somebody really deeply cares about your well-being and your achievement. And as long as we keep that as a priority in our business, we all are going to be winners whether we make a lot of money or whether we don't. We're going to begin to have a new attitude towards our children and our families. Many of you are in this business unselfishly. You have joined this organization so you can help your children get a better education and do better things in their life. And that's why you have a responsibility in this business to be an achiever so you can be a hero and an example for others to follow. Some of you live in communities where not many people are making it. And you can talk to them all day. 
But if you really want to be a wonderful hero for them, go ahead and achieve in this business and don't tell them, show them. And when you show them that you can do it, then they'll know they can do it. <laughs> and I know we have a lot of international people here from Mexico to all the other markets in the world. But I can tell you something, we never did well in any foreign market because a bunch of Americans came over there and did well. We did well in those markets when the people who lived there made the plan live for them. And when it lived there, then it lived. <laughs> Let's us go into this world and touch this world and be the number one group that says to everybody, we're watching and we believe in you. Thank you so much for joining us.